I was gonna hop on and get started painting this welcome truck. Give me a second while I try to get everything set up on my line, or on my end, excuse me. You guys have been submitting so many photos uh, for the creations that you guys have done so far on Easter eggs and peeps, and I have been blown away. It's been awesome. Uh, there we go. I'm trying to get myself pulled up down here so I can make sure and see comments. Hello, hello. We're about to start painting our welcome truck here in just a second. Let me get everything set up on my end. I am... How are you guys doing? What is today? Wednesday? Tuesday? I think it's Wednesday. it's Wednesday. How are y'all doing on this Wednesday? I can't even keep up with what the day is anymore. All the days seem to just be running together. So, I hope you guys are doing well. I, uh, I'm inside my workshop right now and it is 90 degrees and I had to close the door to limit the sound for the live. So it's quite toasty in here. Uh, hold on one second. I'm gonna try to get better at posting or getting all my technical stuff set up in a more quick manner. Um, this is the welcome truck that I showed you guys on Monday night. I already went ahead and put uh, two coats of teal. I don't, my lighting is just not the greatest. Uh, hold on now. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see if I can't adjust. I don't know. I think it's because the sun's coming in right now. I have my light on. I'm not sure. Uh, but I went ahead and got this already painted with uh, my base coat of teal. I already did two coats of teal. Um, I'm trying to make sure that I can do my, my lives from start to finish, so I try to save myself a step here. So obviously anytime you start painting your dirt, you're gonna wanna have your base or your prime, actually we call it a prime. Your prime coat is gonna be those first two coats you put down, and then your base coat is gonna be putting those colors on your piece, and then you go from sh to shading, outlining, highlighting. Uh, so you'll, you'll hear us refer to that as priming or base coating. Uh, so I went ahead and already did my two coats of teal. I'm not sure those of you that uh, might have picked up the sombrero known this last weekend. We had some teal out there and we sold out of it, but I've, I've got some more coming and we'll have some more this weekend. So I put two coats of this teal on onto my truck already. And I'm actually going to show you guys kind of a dry brush look on the truck. I did some earlier, kind of samples of some. Y'all see Carly's arm in the background. You want to say hello? She doesn't want to get into the frame. Uh, but I did a couple of samples here earlier, um, just trying to try out some new things and see if I could find a technique that I really liked. I, I use dry brushing a lot when I'm doing signs or things that are supposed to look like trees. Uh, but I kind of liked the distress look on the truck. So that's what I'm gonna actually show you guys first. So this was my base coat color and I'm gonna use two different colors. I'm gonna use a shade darker this is actually like my shading teal. And then I'm gonna use like a, sh a shade lighter, which is a lot lighter. But you can see the contrast of these three colors together. That's what's gonna give me the look that I'm seeking currently. So that's gonna be the first step that I'm gonna do because when I'm taking that brush and I'm doing my dry brush, it kinda can get really sloppy. So I like to do that first and then come in and do my colors for my base coating. So. I already have some in a little two ounce cup. These are my favorite things to use uh, pretty much all the time. Outlining, shading, uh, doing dry brushing. Hello. Uh, so this one's already, I have my dark teal in here. It already has a little bit of water in there because I do like it to be watered down. I personally find if it's really thick, then my strokes are gonna be short and I prefer my strokes to be kind of longer. So all I'm doing is just get, this is one of those cheap brushes, as you can see, mine's all rusted and disgusting, that you can get for 75 cents or a dollar at Home Depot. Um, so I'm just dipping that into some of the dark teal with a little bit of water to see if I can get some longer strokes. So I'm gonna come in here and all the parts that I'm keeping teal are the parts that I'm gonna do this on. Anything I'm gonna come back with the color, I'm not gonna necessarily try to touch that right now. 
Now there's no right or wrong on this. It's kind of just your own personal desire and look. Um, like I said, I played around with this earlier and I actually have some off to the side of me that are already done with this. So that way when this one's wet, I can go ahead and put one of those. And so you'll get to see this across the table. So I'm gonna just try to get some of that dark color. I know the shadow is really terrible right now. The sunlight's coming in right here and it's just not the best. Um, but I'm taking that darker teal and just getting a very little bit on my brush. I don't want much, I don't want clumps. And I'm just kind of following along with the length of my truck. I try to get those strokes to follow lengthwise. If they went up and down, I just feel like that would look really weird. So. I'm following really the body style of my truck. And now on my fender, since they're rounded, I'm gonna try to do more rounded strokes. I know it might look weird right now, but since this is the very beginning, we've got lots of time and other colors that we're gonna get on this truck. And so at the moment, yeah, he might look kind of different, right? But bear with me, I promise you, I'll show you. All right, I'm gonna leave it at that. I don't wanna to put too much on. I personally would, I prefer a little bit less is more because once you get too much, there's no way to take it back unless you wanna repaint it your base color and start over. Do you always need to base coat? Hi, Amanda. Yes, you always need to base coat. We use MDO and the, the face of it is very, oh, what's the word? Um, it's very smooth and it doesn't have a lot of texture that soaks in that paint but it'll leave it there it kind of soaks it in and it's like you it, you almost don't see it if you only do one coat which also means you can see through that coat so we put enough paint on there as your base to make sure that you cannot see through the paint if you can still see through the paint you're gonna want to do another coat so I, I did do two coats on this. I actually did some with a roller and then some with my brush because I was trying to gauge how much paint to try to tell you guys what to use or how to use it and the best way to go about it. And both ways, whether I did the uh, brush or the roller, I, I still needed two coats either way. On, on colors like your blues, um, especially these lighter colors, more vibrant uh, pastel colors, they don't cover near as well as maybe a darker color. So some colors I can get away with only one coat, but a lot of them are gonna need two, and this was one of them. All right, so I got my dark now. I'm gonna go that shade lighter. So I use that teal background. I'm doing a shade lighter with the colors that I personally have. So on this one, I'm just gonna give me a little bit in a cup, and I am going to mix it with some water. Same thing. 50 cent, 75 cent, I don't know, cheap people, Home Depot. Mine are, I just have one inch ones. I have some that are two inch. I prefer the two inch, uh, but my two inch ones were looking even worse than these. So I just decided to use one. Either way works. Anything that you have will work. It'll still give you that same look. So now I'm gonna take that light color and do the same thing I did with the dark. I'm just trying to give it some contrast. Those dark colors, or that teal did not look dark. I didn't think it looked dark until I covered the whole truck. And then I was like, oh, okay, that's a little dark. And I didn't care for that dark look. So anytime I do that dry brushing, I always go for a lighter shade, but I didn't want to go to white because I thought white would be too light. So I personally just did a shade lighter of what I had on hand that I felt like would go really good with this piece and make it pop. And those light colors and coming in like that, you're really giving it some definition and some contrast as well. And that becomes very appealing to your eye. So no right or reason, a rhyme or reason. Again, I'm just kind of going against the length of the truck. And then on my fenders, since they're more curved, I'll do my strokes curved. So you got a little much there, but that's okay. All right, now, as far as the dry brushing part goes, I'm gonna call it done. Um, it's something that you can add more colors in. You could even add in like a, a tan color, I think would look really great. You could be a lot more creative with it. Uh, but if I, if I was doing that, my videos would be three hours long. <laughs> so we're gonna stop with just two. I like to do my base and then a shade darker and a shade lighter. So 
now I'm going to actually move right on into base coating and that means getting the other colors on my truck that are going to be the base of the, the parts that I'm doing. So we have our tires, our window, and then the little wood part on uh, the back. So because this teal ended up being dark, I'm going to personally do the wood on my truck white. Uh, so at this moment, I just feel like with the white, it's going to lighten it up. I could do a wood grain that would look really pretty, but I think with the teal, the wood grain might be a bit dark. So I'm going to save the wood grain for maybe if you do a red truck, a red welcome truck, the wood grain back I think would look fantastic. But a lot of times, y'all, when I'm painting a new pattern, I think I want it one way, and then I start painting it, which is exactly what I did today, and it doesn't look the way I thought, so I change it. So I've actually been working on the wheelbarrow pattern that I'm gonna do live on Friday, uh, because I got some new colors yesterday, so I've been working on that one, and yeah, I had to repaint them a couple of times. In fact, I still gotta go repaint uh, one more flower I wasn't able to do earlier because the way I thought I would like it, it just didn't come out the way I wanted it to. And uh, that's really, all. It, it's a part of this. It's a part of having a vision and wanting to bring that vision to life when you can't seem to make it happen. You can repaint it. So I, <laughs> I spent a lot of hours out here today working on all this and I don't feel like I got a lot done because I was repainting quite a bit. But now I'm just getting that base coat of my white on my window. I'm gonna need this to dry before I can really start to do those next steps. So, you guys saw me do my dry brush for that color on my truck. And now I'm just doing the base coat for any of those colors that are not gonna stay teal. So, I'm gonna go ahead and grab these sides while I have this color. I like to do my sides that way that they are not only sealed, but I also prefer them to really match the color that I do on the top. So that's just my personal preference. If you keep the teal on the side, that's fine too. So, you guys can see, I'm just making sure I'm getting those corners. You don't, you don't see any exposed MDO through there. And if you guys have TikTok, uh, go follow them. My daughter's giving us a TikTok shout out, except I told you I don't have no videos on TikTok. It's still volume. Oh, okay. Well, apparently you can go follow us on TikTok, but I don't know how to post videos on I, TikTok. I can, I can record you live if you go live. I've been telling her, I'm, I don't know, 33. I feel, well, I'll be 33 next week. Uh, but I feel like I'm young when it comes to technology, but apparently I'm not because I don't even know how to work stuff anymore. I know how to work it. I feel like a dinosaur. Uh, when it comes to new things. Even Facebook. I have trouble doing things on Facebook. I don't know how to work Facebook, but I still have a account. So I just, yeah. All right, so now I got all my white base coat on there, so I'm gonna switch brushes. The only thing left that I have to get a base coat on is gonna be my tires and my bumper. So my bumpers, I always like to do a gray. Um, if you have black and white on hand, you don't even need to buy those. You could obviously just mix your own. So I'm trying to always make sure I'm keeping you guys in the loop where you can see the screen. So here's their account. Oh, Carly's going to show you our, our TikTok account, apparently. I don't know if you guys can see what. So. Thank you, Carly. <laughs> You're so sweet. We appreciate that, baby. So, front bumper, back bumper. Let's see. I feel like so, those of you that have been painting so far, I've enjoyed, sincerely enjoyed, and gotten quite a few smiles and chuckles out of the photos that y'all have submitted. I'm curious, is it therapeutic for you? Do you enjoy it? I think they look really, really good. They do look awesome. I've seen so many really fantastic creations. Like, I'm not for me, it's very therapeutic. I didn't know if it was the same for you guys or if it possibly just stressed you out even the more. The only thing I'm going to draw or coloring is So, all right, now I'm going to do the uh, black on my tire.
Now you don't necessarily have to do the black on your tires right now. You could always do the black when you do your outline. Uh, me personally, because I do, I like my sides to match the top. I'd rather use my wider brush. That's my Kotlin mop brush uh, than to use my really thin script liner. So that's why you guys will see me doing that. Technically, yeah, you could do it at the end when you do your other black. It's kind of personal preference. Hey Debbie says, so, did you get the new paint colors yet? I sure did. I'm going to show you guys here in a little bit. Uh, I, I saw last night, that, Debbie, you asked for the a softball color. I didn't get a softball color, but I'm going to ask John when I go uh, into Ace on Saturday. I'll see if he can't help me find a good softball color for you. Uh, but when I went, I got a like a seafoam green a sky blue and a new coral that I thought were going to be really, really good with the, um, the flowers coming up. All right, so now I got the base coating done. All the colors that are going to be on here that I do at the beginning are done. So this one, I'm going to have Carly go and move for me. Thank you. You got it. And I already have one that was prepped that is ready for shading. So this I'll one's already dry. Put it on the table, sweetie, thank you. Um, now, since I dried these earlier, since I went ahead and painted this earlier, I am gonna go ahead and clean it off with Windex. I don't know about you guys, but I've had a ton of pollen here at the house. And so when the pollen gets on these pieces and I try to go do that detailed work and I have watered down paint for that detailed work, it does this whole, like spreading kind of motion and you'll see like open circles in, in the lines that you made that you didn't actually make and um, that's really from stuff in the air that will get on the top of your paint so uh, we buy Windex refillables by like the gallon at Sam's and we use it like crazy so I just cleaned it off so that I know my surface is nice and clean if you don't have Windex you could always use uh, water so, uh, Cynthia just asked, online orders, are they for Saturday pickup? Yes, they are. This truck, um, if you've already ordered, is ready to go this Saturday. We are only open 10 to 5, and I was seeing on the uh, weather forecast that we're at 80% chance of rain. So, um, if, if that's the case and it's pouring rain, I can't say that we're going to have the drive through open. You might have to actually park and come into the garage. Um, it was just a nightmare with the electronics. Last weekend, I dropped our credit card machine in a puddle of water. It was a nightmare. Uh, so we'll do our best on that, but if the weather is not cooperating, we might have to uh, close the drive through option and have you guys just come into the store. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead, hop right into shading. So I base coated with that teal, right? And this is my shading teal. All it is is teal, a, a darker blue, and some black mixed together, and that just gave me my darker teal color. So, I just got that some of that into my cup. I'm gonna add a little bit of water. Anytime I shade or I do any outlining work, I prefer the paint to be uh, watered down a little bit. Here I go, spilling it on my piece. Uh, I prefer it to be watered down because to me it just moves a lot smoother. So, now I'm just using a little tester spoon to mix it. You can use anything, popsicle sticks, whatever you have on hand. And I'm going to start shading the truck. Now, I have my flat shader, and I'm just dipping the corner triangle, and I'm taking this loaded corner up against the perimeter of my lines. So I'm going to start with my door, because that's an easy line to forget. I'm just kind of going to follow along. into the next line type thing. So you'll see me start somewhere and I will just follow it along 
all the way around. And I know y'all can't fully see the truck in view. Uh, if I turned it the other way, then you guys would be seeing it really sideways. So give me just one second. Let me do my perimeter and I'll show you guys what it looks like. Now, when it comes to this truck, the teal is going to really be the only color that I'm really doing an outline on. Can you guys see it? <laughs> it's such a terrible camera angle. I just followed the lines. That's all I did. I followed the lines with my shader brush with some teal. Now, my white, I'm not going to shade it. I'm leaving it stark white. My bumpers... You guys can't see them. You see how tiny they are? This is maybe a two inch by two inch space. And this one's maybe a one inch by two inch space. So they're very small. So on something like that, I cannot outline or shade, excuse me, shade the perimeter of it because then it'll just look like a big gray blob. So on something like that, that's where I take those real wispy lines and I just do a wispy line across it. I don't want to make it too difficult or more intricate than it needs to be because less can be more more often than not so I'm just kind of doing a little wispy line I'll do the same thing on this one that's all I'm gonna do on that gray I'm gonna leave it simple so now as far as outline or excuse me as far as shading I'm done typically I would put a lot more lines on that but since I did the dry, dry brushing I kind of look at that as part, of, as part of my shading, as far as the color goes. I don't want to put a whole lot more strokes on that because I think it would just really become too much and overpowering. And I don't want that look. Can you get that one for me? You can stick it on the easel over there. Thank you. That one. The only easel in here. What about that one? Yeah, but I don't know about y'all's kiddos, but mine's been very bored and very over. Uh, school not being in session and she wants to go back so bad so, alright so this one's another one I already got ready it's the same thing you just seen me do but this one's already dry so that way I can show you outlining again I'm gonna clean it with Windex just to make sure that all of my brush strokes are gonna look the way I want them to look and they're not gonna start separating kind of like just a little tip and trick now, I'm going to use my script liner, which my favorite script liner I've only been using for six months on everything, uh, is really starting to bite the dust and it's really not looking good anymore, but I don't have any other brushes broken in as good as this one. So I'm going to try to use this one, but I might have to switch. We'll see how well this one works for us. So. Guys, I have a question. You're going to have to talk about it. I have a question. I, I don't Come I don't come up with good I I don't come up with good ideas, so I want an idea of what I should draw, like a sunflower or like something like oh, that. Oh, Carly said she needs some ideas on what she can draw. Oh, okay. So maybe a sunflower would be good because I think we need some sunflowers. Alright, so this black paint, I already have watered down. I know I've told you guys a million times. I I like my outline uh whatever color I'm using for my outline to be watered down so that it will flow a lot more smooth and it'll go in the way that I want it to go. A lot of other times I follow my paintbrush. This time I kind of want it to follow me a little bit, but I still end up following it. So I'm going to start with the middle so that I'm not dragging my arm across, across wet paint. So I'm going to just start right here. Kind of do that outline in my window. I don't know if you guys can see, but I am not the best at keeping a straight hand. My hand gets very uh, wiggly. I, I get kind of anxious at times. In fact, I was really anxious before this video and had to get a lot of hugs. Just kind of get that strength to, you know, push through. And all the hugs worked, I can definitely say. So. Uh, so I've been trying to, uh, you know, just kind of persevere, work through, and here we are. So now on this black outline, on the words, personally, I'm going to hit every line and I'm kind of just filling in, in the those lines. 
I like to actually fill in with the etching and allow my brush to just follow. That's why these lines are so nice. Your brush can just follow and fill in because that's exactly what I'm doing right now. Now, when it comes to this kind of more detailed work, you guys won't see me talking as much, so I actually have to think and pay attention to what I'm doing. So, but I'd like to know how you guys have found outlining to be. I've heard some people saying that, that it was a lot harder than it looks. It's a lot harder than you think. It's harder than you, my daughter just, Carly just said it's harder than you think. I agree. I used to watch uh, my mom paint and then I'd be like, oh yeah, I can do that. And then I go try to do it and no, I no, thought I can't. It was so e I thought it was going to be so easy. Yeah, Carly was saying she thinks she thought it would be so easy and then she goes to do it and it's not. But it's just one of those things that takes practice, practice, practice. So, hey Haley. Oh, you like that? The, the teal? Haley, I'm going to have to show you here in a minute. Um, I got some new colors. I got a seafoam green and I got a sky blue yesterday that I'm actually using on the uh, with the flowers. And so that one I'm gonna do live on Friday. So I was practicing on that one today to kind of just, you know, get my colors nailed down and get down the technique that I wanted to do. And um, I think it looks really good. I'm gonna show you guys as soon as I get done with this so you don't get a sneak peek at those colors. And I even thought, honestly, after I got those colors, that man, I should have not done this truck and teal, but I already had it ready to go in teal, so. I, I would do purple and teal because those are my favorite colors. Carla well, said she'd do purple and teal. That would be a very bright, colorful truck, maybe. I would think that would be very pretty. Or like, just like, any type of blue. I like any type of blue, any type of purple. Me too, I love blue. I'm curious to know if you guys would do the truck a different color, what would you do? And oh my goodness, by the way, I think it was Jamie. Jamie submitted a photo of this truck that she painted and it was gorgeous. I don't know if you've seen it. I cannot even remember what post she posted it on. I'm not sure, but it was very pretty. I'm gonna have to find it and show you guys. She also did like a tan kind of brush stroke on, on the back of the truck. It was just gorgeous. And she did kind of like a turquoise -ish teal kind of color. I don't know. I love seeing that creativeness. It's gorgeous. Well, if you guys, did any of you see that truck yet? If you guys think that like your peeps like look like like bad or something, they look really good. Like they look really good. Yeah, Carly's saying that y'all's peeps look really good. We genuinely been impressed. And we've even had people telling us that they've been you know going around their neighborhood and seeing that people did that they got from us and that's just so awesome is anybody's neighborhood on here been filled with with the Easter projects Ours has not really we live in Conroe kind of in the middle of nowhere so you don't really see yard art out where we are unless we put it in our own yards but would you believe that since I paint this for a living that my yard is always empty because I don't think about doing my own yard so, all right. I got a question for you guys. Is your, what's your favorite holiday? I wanna know. Carly's asking what everybody's favorite holiday is. Mine is what's yours? Christmas. Christmas, that's mine too. We still have Christmas decorations up from like five years ago. on me, she's telling me that, or she's telling y'all that we still have but, our Christmas decorations up. But I was, we do. I was thinking I was gonna hang up my Christmas. <laughs> Yo, we still have um, all of our garland and our wreaths <coughs> and the decoration in our kitchen above our, um, what is that bitch thing that, I don't know, it's over your it's stove top. It's making me sad because So maybe I just need to leave it all up. I mean, it's already there, right? We're already, what, it's eight me, months away from Christmas? It's making me so excited, but like... I like our Christmas decorations. I do, but... Y'all, like I one, not this year, but I think it was 2018, maybe. I kept my decorations up till February, into February, and I was like, okay, well, this is like a little out of control. I need to take them down. Oh. So, I, which this year I'm in April, and 
Do I have some up? Whoopsie! I was about to, I'm, I was thinking that I could put my Christmas tree up again and like, Christmas is like, it's reminding me of Christmas, like, so it makes me sad, so I was like, should I get up or should I get up? Now, y'all, on this welcome, it does take me a minute. Um, I don't, I am not near as a fast a painter as my mom is. She's, she's like, skating lightning fast. I'm not that fast, uh, but I'm not done. Uh -uh. But you guys can see how wet that is. And that's exactly why I did that right now before trying to do the outline because my arm would go straight across that and I would really smear that everywhere and I don't want to do that. That happens to me. So, all right, now that I did my word, now I can actually outline my piece and get this one wrapped on up. Uh, since I already did, you know, all the base coating and I have one ready for every layer, it's not going to take me that long to get it finished. Now, had I been sitting and waiting on paint to dry, obviously I wouldn't have been able to move this fast. But I used three different ones to help me do this in such a manner that I could just flow from one to the other. So, okay, in guys. between, you're going to definitely want your layers to be dry, or as dry as possible, before you get to your next layer, especially when you go from, like, base coating to shading. Now, shading to outlining, that is one that you could do, uh, you know, without it being completely dry. Mm -hmm. So, I was going to ask, like, should I, pick, should I draw a sunflower, or should I not? Carly wants to know how to draw a sunflower. Debbie, many more years painting than you. Yes, she has been, huh? I know I've told you guys before that it was like, Mom, I need some money to go to the movies with my friend. She's like, okay, well, what are you going to do? You know, how are you going to earn that money? I ain't giving it to you. So I'm like, well, what do you need me to do? I need you to paint this, this, and that. And I'm like, okay, well, I guess that's what I'm doing to earn some money. So she started me young. I'm gonna save up until I have I'm not good at saving my Oh yeah. Not at all. Carly can sit over here and talk this whole time. Talk, talk, talk. She can talk everybody's hair off. That's Thank you, happen. Connie. Go Connie said it's me. looking good. Look, I already drug my finger across there. Oh, but that's okay. I gotta touch it up. There we go trying to make sure I keep it all in frame. At this point, all I'm doing is just outlining those lines with my black paint. My black paint is watered down. I'm using a script liner, and that's what's gonna give you those really crisp lines that you're wanting. You dropping your slime? struggle with outlining hey I struggled with it for many years in fact I still feel like I struggle with it especially on really long straight lines or on circles I don't I don't do good with straight lines and I definitely don't do good with circles Maybe that's uh, like it. and so it's just one of those things that takes a lot of practice but I'm gonna tell you guys you have a free blank canvas on the back of every single piece I'm gonna tell you to flip that thing over and practice doing some of those strokes on the back with whatever brush that you have. And that would be easier and be more helpful when you flip it over the front. It helps you also learn the brush that you're using so that, you know, you feel comfortable with the way that it lays. All brushes are 
brushes are going to lay down a little bit different. They're going to take in paint a little different. They're going to throw paint down a little different. It's all, you know, it's all very dependent based on what brush you have. My mom's talent is painting, but mine is talking. Carly says that my talent's painting and hers is talking. I think I can agree with that, lovey. <laughs> I'm definitely out of frame. I'm almost done. You want me to do that? I'm just, no, it's okay. I thought you were like the next one. Following that perimeter at this point. Oh, look, I got one of my long, one of my hairs and one of my dog hairs in here. Fun fact, about 90% of my finished products have dog hair in them. Either in the paint, in the poly, in the base coat, they're in there somewhere. I yeah. can't even tell y'all how many dog hairs I pick out of paint every day because my dogs yeah. are out here with me all day long and they always have paint inside their hair as well uh, from me doing drips and then them laying down on it. And their hair is like always in my hair because they... Yes, they shed so bad. We have a corgi and she, it, oh my goodness, her hair dogs. never stops coming out. Our dogs need to get rid all right, so, oh, the only thing I forgot right here is my door handle. Good thing you realize that. Because, like, when everything else is but, uh, outlined, then and you forget one thing. Now, the only thing left to do on my black is these little gray swishes that I did, my shading that I did inside my bumper, I'm going to just do a little, just a little swish. It kind of gives that dimension. I really like three-tone on all colors that I do. And I wanted to possible. show you guys something. So as far as my outline, oh, you can't show them that, not yet. As far as my outline, he's done. I am gonna put a little bit of white on here. And then for me, I'm gonna call it done. Now, you don't have to do it as simple as I did. Obviously, you could put more on there if you wanted to. Um, I like to keep, you can, you can do it. I was just saying I didn't wanna show them yet because that one's not finished. Sorry, I didn't want to hurt her feelings. I wasn't meaning like that. I was practicing on a flower earlier and it doesn't look good to me and she wanted to show you guys, but I'm like, ah, I don't care for it at the moment. So I'm not, I'm not sure but I want to show anybody yet. All right, so uh, now on here, I don't have one that's already finished. So this one is wet. So I'm gonna just have to do the best I can. Only thing else I'm gonna do on him is get a little bit of white on the bumper and on my tires. The reason I'm not gonna put any white on my truck is because I use that really light color, that light, light blue, it's like a sky blue on that shade part of my truck that kind of runs across it. And so I think that that suffices for me when it comes to highlighting on that Porsche. It's light enough that it gives me that highlight look. If I took my white brush right now and I did those thick highlights, I think it would just really take away from the look I'm personally going for. So. Also, when this letters are done, I am going to come in and like the, you see the middle of this L right here that it's fully black. That's because it really left me a skinny strip. So when it's dry, I am going to have to come in there and take a little strip of white. I can try it right now, but yeah, it's still a wee bit wet. Uh, so let me see if I can just do these bumper um, on my on my wheels, I don't actually follow it all the way around. I just kind of do a little bit on opposite sides. All right, now, and on my letters as well, I do want to show you guys something. I've heard some of you guys saying that you've done letters on stuff and it just doesn't look finished. Take a little bit of white and do some real wispy lines. black is still so 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 wet so these lines aren't going to come out quite the way I'm wanting them to definitely going to have to touch that back up in the morning Woo! it's becoming gray so I'm having to dip it and then almost immediately wash it back out because it is so gray waited until it's finished obviously I wouldn't have to keep unloading my brush uh, so 
Now he is actually finished, except I just drug my finger across the headlight and tore off some paint. So I'll be fixed that right away. All right, for him, I call him done. What do you guys think? Let me see if I can't. Do you guys like that distressed look? Do you prefer it to be more uh, plain and blank in the background with some shading color? I personally love the distressed look. I'm not sure if everybody else likes that. But if, if you don't care for that, you could always just stick with the shader, the that dark teal that we did around, and do a few little wispy lines going long ways with the truck if you didn't like that. But this one, He's done for me. I love him. I think he's beautiful. Now you could do a, do a yellow truck, a lime green truck, a, you know, uh, any of the new colors that we got. Oh my gosh, we got some really pretty new colors. Uh, let me just show you guys on Friday what I'm making with all of our new colors right quick. You like the distressed look? Awesome. This is that flower wheelbarrow. We're gonna do this on Friday on live, but I don't know if you could see, we got coral. This is one of our new colors we just got yesterday. And then we got like a, a sea foam green, and then we got a sky blue. So these three colors are brand new that we just added yesterday, and we will have available this weekend, and that we're gonna use on this pattern. So these are the colors I kind of threw together base coating this today. Obviously, this isn't finished. I gotta kind of work on this tomorrow and get it where I want it to be before our live on Friday. But this was the flower Carly was showing you. That's kind of that look I'm going for. I haven't finished the center of it, so I was not ready to show everybody. Uh, but I like the look of kind of what I was trying to get for. So I hope that this was helpful. Those of you that have already ordered a truck, we have several people that ordered this on Monday night after um, my live. You can come and pick that up this weekend. Uh, we're open Saturday from 10 to 5. If you still haven't ordered but want to order, you can always go to yardarest.com and go ahead and place your order and swing by on Saturday and see me. Again, those of you that didn't hear earlier, if it's raining and pouring rain on Saturday, the uh, drive-through curbside option would, might be temporary closed through that weather, uh, but we're going to have to play that by ear. So.